Perfect. All right. Well, I see a lot of familiar faces. Um, for those of you who I haven't seen before, my name is Tina Lanou. I'm a teacher on special assignment with ILE. If you ever have any questions with Breakout or any of the digital tools, we are here to support you. I did put my information in there. And if you click on the office hours link, you can schedule something. If you need a little bit more with Breakout, I am here to help you. So today we're going to really look at connecting those 21st century learning skills with our digital breakout EDU. And then you guys are going to get to experience a digital breakout. And then our goals for today is to activate those premium breakout accounts. If you have not already, I know there was a couple that have already started, so that's perfect. And then we're going to choose some digital breakouts that you guys can use with your students. Even tomorrow, if you really wanted to do that, you will be ready to, to experience that and your students will as well. So what is Breakout EDU? There are two options for Breakout EDU. There are Breakout EDU kits that we don't have it in the district anymore. They are at site. So if your site has a digital or a breakout kit, you can use that. Otherwise, we're really focusing on the digital breakout EDU. So everything we're doing today is all the digital ones that you guys can use with your students. It is essentially an escape room for your students. They get to escape. They're using content standards, which is um, why breakout EDU is so valuable in your classroom for your students. Using our guide for instruction, we really look at SAMR and how we can integrate technology that is purposeful. So with Breakout EDU, you're really able to modify some of those lessons for your students. They're breaking out, they're using all of those 21st century skills that they have to and they need to use in order to be successful students. So this also brings in this SEL component for them. They are communicating, they're talking. This, those Some students who maybe think they have those like puzzle, I don't know, there are some kids that just, they can look at puzzles and they're, they got it in a second. This is gonna help those students really stand out. Even those students who are a little bit more shy, they're able to use some of those critical thinking skills to really build and escape from these rooms. And so it is so important for your students to be doing this uh, collaboratively. Now with Breakout EDU, you have to remember that everything on the page can be a clue, okay? So you wanna make sure you are looking at every little piece. It could be in the instructions, it could be in the pictures, they could be hidden somewhere else. So really making sure your students know that and they're able to see that, okay, I can use anything on this page in order to help me solve the problem. So I'm going to show you guys a quick little video of introducing what Breakout EDU. This does show the digital box or the digital breakout and then also the box as well. One of the best parts about being an educator is seeing aha moments that spark curiosity, that develop skills to prepare students for the future, and transform my classroom into a place where all learners succeed. Breakout EDU levels up classrooms into immersive, learner-centered experiences, boosting engagement, problem-solving, and critical thinking skills with immersive kit-based experiences and interactive standards-aligned digital games. My Classroom is a mysterious archaeological dig one minute and an exciting galaxy expedition the next. Breakout EDU challenges my class's content knowledge, inspires student collaboration, and empowers them with the skills they need in and out of the classroom. Plus, students can create their own games, demonstrating their comprehension and creativity. And I love that Breakout EDU seamlessly integrates into any lesson plan. Create more aha moments and unlock the love of learning with Breakout EDU. Now you guys are gonna be able to experience a breakout for yourselves. I am not going to tell you what grade level this is yet. I want you guys, <laughs> you're going to figure this out. You're going to work through it. So just some kind of quick tips as you're going through this, make sure that you're examining all the clues. Okay. What do you notice? Make sure you're sharing ideas. 
with yourselves, but this is also for your students to share the ideas and listen to what your teammates say because they may have a different perspective on it. And then test what you think you know. If it doesn't open, don't worry about it. Try it again. So there's lots of different resources in there. You guys are going to be able to do, I know you're going to be able to break out at least one lock. <laughs> I have faith you'll do more, but... <laughs> So tips for success is having, make sure you guys are working as a team. I will put you into breakout rooms with two to three people, depending on how many we have. Um, again, that listening to each other, this is something you can share with your students, this slide. So you can take that and go through the breakout with them as well. So I'm going to give you guys about 10 minutes. I'm going to show you the breakout. You do not have to have everyone. You can open it if you want to. So in the activities tab, I just opened it up. The game link is there. This one's called Break Out the Beat. I'm going to start those breakout rooms. I am going to give you guys about 10 minutes to go through the breakout. If you're done, you finish, come on back here. All right, so it looks like we have three to four of you guys in each room. So I'm going to open those, and I will see you in about 10 minutes. Welcome back. I wanted to finish. <laughs> I'm too competitive and I'm too uh, blind. Can you make them bigger? Because I had to like blow my screen way up. I'm going blind. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's probably the best bet is to really just blow them up on your screen if that's you're having trouble. All right. I want you to put in the chat. What did playing the game tell you about yourself and your teammates? Okay, so go ahead and put that in. I'll tell you in a minute, Christina, what grade level it was. <laughs> All right, so in the chat, what did playing this game tell you about yourself and your teammates? They're competitive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys all think differently. Yep. And brain power, perfect. They were helpful. Perfect, I know takes a while to kind of get in the mindset of how to break this out. I know 10 minutes is not enough sometimes for these, but just wanted to get, see what it looks like. Um, oh yeah, all had different ideas. Okay, so how many locks did you guys get through? Three, I see three fingers, three, all of them. Oh, nice, you guys all broke out three out of four. Perfect, okay. Um, so that, that breakout is geared towards elementary middle grade. So four, five, six is what that one is for. You can see this one is not a standards based anything. Uh, it is more of just a team building. That's where you really want to start out when you're using the breakout EDUs because you want your students to have that success. Okay. So looking at reflection. Reflection is the key to this whole thing that we're doing. So I kind of gave you guys that question. What did you notice about yourself and your teammates? Tying it back together, you'll hear the conversations. We'll just, you'll be amazed at the conversations you have with your students. And then after each uh, game that you have, there are some post-game reflection questions that can be asked to the students. So in Google Classroom, I did link in something. It's an activity. It's the 4C Creative um, activities that you guys could possibly use if you want to. Otherwise, it could be very informal, just asking them the question. So for this reflection piece, what is your favorite kind of music? What songs or music make you want to dance? Create another music theme clue for this game. So those are some of the reflection questions that you could ask your students to kind of keep that conversation going. Okay. Now, one of the biggest pieces to take away from breakout is in the breakouts, really the journey is going to be far more important than if they actually broke out. Okay. Because there could be one student who is doing everything if you're working in those groups. So really making sure that they're collaborating on these and letting all voices be heard, giving them that think time so it's not that one person just jumping in and say, oh, we got to do this, we got to do this. Maybe it's that competitiveness coming out of you, Christina. I know. <laughs> uh, or Sanchez, I don't know about you, uh, Sergio. I don't know how competitive you are yet. <laughs> 
Oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> it must be a Christina thing. <laughs> so, so really telling the students that, okay? Letting them go through and say, even if you don't break out, it's really the conversations that you're having and that working together for them. So some tips for starting out in your classes. Some of you have second grade, some of you may be up in high school, start playing together, okay? You share your screen, you walk them through and really help to, to drive that those conversations that need to be had during these breakouts. This is probably the hardest part, okay? Especially if you're playing together is to, um, the nicest way is not tell them, not give them any hints, let them work through, give them that struggle because you want them to be able to, to have someone in that room help them to be successful. There are hints you can give them if they are really stuck. They do have them built into the game and I'll show you guys where those are. Or if you wanna to try to give them a hint on your own, you can as well, but they do work to give you hints in order to help the students uh, break out and be successful. After they go through and you guys do this together, then you can start breaking it up, putting it into smaller groups. You can start assigning games and just have them do them on their own. In the teacher dashboard, you can look at how long it took them to complete it, how many locks, they actually completed. So there's a lot of data that you can look at and I will show you guys on my end in a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create our account. Okay, so I'm going to open up in that q and <clears throat> I'm going to unhide. So there's a breakout site. So you guys can click on the breakout site and also your access code. So let me pull this up so I can show you guys real fast. If you've already used Breakout and you're connected to another school, it does not matter. Um, so don't feel like you have to disconnect your school. You can stay on the one you're at. So you're going to find your school in here. You're going to highlight this and copy it. And then we're going to put it into, let me share this one. So we're going to go to the platform. You're going to log in with Google login, how you would single sign on. Okay. So click on that platform, log in. You're an educator. So make sure you click educator, copy that access code. We're going to click on our, our initials in the top left. And depending on how big or small your screen is, we're looking for the purple section to enter that access code. Okay. I'm going to give you guys just a couple minutes to get in and then come back to me. If you have questions, feel free to ask, unmute any of that. I can't open that thing. What did you say? Sorry. No, you're good. I so, might have been. Oh, there. Never mind. I lied. Yeah. I remember you put it there. And I actually don't know if RVS has one now that I'm thinking about it. So just pick a school. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Okay, you do. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else need more time to log in and get the um, premium access? I want to give you guys time if you have it, but if you don't need it, I'll move on. Are we good? Keep stay. I see some thumbs up. Speak now. All right. I'm going to move on. If you're not there, once I give you guys some time, I will um, help those of you who can't get in yet. But I do want to get you guys going so we can get you some time to look at some other features. So um, connecting your and assigning from your Google Classroom. So your students um, you're going to connect your Google Classroom, and I'll show you how to do that. And then your students, all they do is log in through the student platform. Before your students needed a code, we don't have to do that anymore. So that's really nice. So when you're in, we're going to click on where it says My Classes on the left-hand side, and then we're going to hit Import Class. Once you hit on that Import Class, it's going to ask you which one, ClassLink, Google, Microsoft, we're Google District, so we're going to click on Google. 
And then you should see a list of all the Google classes you have. Now, I don't know why it does this because it has a check mark next to it, but you can only do one at a time. So you will have to, if you have multiple Google Classrooms, it, I don't know, I couldn't do it on my end. Yours may be a little different, but I only was able to do one at a time. I connected all of these. Anytime you have new students join, you do the same thing, import, update, and then your students are going to be able to have that access. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys again, just a few minutes. You're in my classes. Go ahead, Christina. Sorry, does it need access to their email addresses and all that? Do we just check all of those? Yes. Okay, just Please. making sure. Yeah, there's the, this is the first time it's gonna ask you for all that information. Um, you know, make sure you accept and then hit continue so that way they can link. And this way they can, I don't want to use the word track, but this way you guys can see the data that your students are doing, okay, or tracking the data. Okay, so again, my classes, we're going to hit import classes. Then we're going to go to import Google Classroom. go through and say, yes, I accept, and then choose those classes. Yes, Amanda. Um, so I'm trying to do that, yes. but every time I click import class, I click Google Classroom, like a white box pops up and then it goes away. Is that like, I feel like that's the permissions it's trying to do, but then it's like not letting me add anything. So you may want to turn off your pop pop-up blocker just for now. Okay. So, or pause it. Do you know how to pause it? Mm, no. Okay. So we're going to hit the at the very top of your mm -hmm. Google um, Chrome. There's a little puzzle piece. Uh huh. And then scroll down. You'll see Add Blocker. Mm -hmm. Click the three dots, and then you're gonna pause on on the site breakout edu yes okay. so when you're on breakout edu pause on that site and then that way you can get that block that pop-up because you want to be able to say yes to it okay it's working now oh no it went away oh i think it's okay. just computer. i'm gonna try i'm gonna restart and i'll try later <laughs> okay <laughs> um let's see what did you say we have to do if we get a new student in the future Okay, so once you get new students, you just do the same process and just click update. So click on whatever that Google Classroom is. So if I was using uh, the coding club or I'll just the ILE PL 2022, I would just click on it and then it updates and your new students will roster into your class. Okay. Perfect. All right. We good? Can I move on from that? I'll give you guys some time too, but I want to get through and give you some other fun resources to use, get you using it tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So when you're in the platform, I'm actually going to just live demo this for you guys so you can see it. Let me pull this over. All right. So I'm going to hit log in. I choose educator. And now I'm in. So on my right hand side, you can see your classes are here as well. You can see your classes are over on the left hand side. If I want to go to my account for any reasons, you can change your little avatar if you don't want um, to have just your initials. Now here's where the 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 filtering for the games comes in. Okay, so you can filter by grade level. I do recommend starting below your grade level to start off, okay? This gives the student some success in what they're doing. Um, start with something that may not be academic for them for the first one or two, just to get them used to how they break out. So I can choose here, I can choose subjects. So if I just wanted all math, or I can actually filter down a little bit more into what type of math that I want. Uh, I'm actually just going to pick, oops, we'll just pick all of them here and then type. This is important. Unless you have a kit at your site 
we want to make sure we only click on digital, okay? So there are very few sites I think that have them. Um, I don't even know which sites have them, so I couldn't tell you. You can just ask someone at your site and see if they do have the physical kits. Otherwise, we want to hit digital and I'm just going to search, okay? It's going to pull up every digital one they have for me. That's within my grade level, within my subject. You can see the little banner over here that says digital. If I don't put digital, you can see here. It, it's pretty clear on if there's a kit or if it's digital that didn't used to be like that. Um, and then here, there's also expansion kits. So if you have a kit at your site, some of them require other pieces that you may not have yet. So really make sure you're filtering those by what it is you would like. When you click on it, let's say I want to do this pumpkin patch puzzle, okay? I don't have time right now to really look at it, so I'm going to just bookmark this to come back at a later time. This is what you guys are going to be doing today is bookmarking some of these. Before you give your students a breakout, please make sure you try the puzzles yourself, okay? You guys need to, one, be able to know if it's something that your students can do. Um, and two, there may be something in there that's just too confusing or hard for them. The great part about this is I could copy it and now I can edit those if I really wanted to. So you guys do have that choice. Um, if I look at this pump and puzzle and I'm like, yes, this is great. I've read the story. I've looked at these lock combinations. I've now looked at why that is the lock combination. I can go through and look at those. I can say, okay, this is great. Now I'm gonna assign this to my students. I click on assign and I choose which class or which classes that I want to assign this to, if you have more than one, and then I just assign the game. When the students log in, you, under your class, the games will be there, okay? So the only thing you're doing in Google Classroom is giving them the link to the student dashboard. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, something that breakouts have now is a lock of the day. So this could be your opener that you give to your students. It is um, a quick lock that the students can go through but it does have to be opened for them or en enabled for them. So I'm gonna click on my classes. I'm gonna find my class over here. So I click on it, I can see who my students are. I can look at the games that I've assigned. Then I can click over here of lock of the day, okay? When it loads, right here, you can click enable or you can disable it. So right now it's disabled. So if another teacher has it enabled on theirs, if they have multiple classes, um, they'll be able to see it. So here I can just click it, open. Now when the students log in, they'll see that. And I'll show you guys that as well. I can click over here on submitted games. We're gonna talk just a little bit about submitted games in a little bit. Um, but now I can click I don't want to do that. So if I wanted to look at these results, now I can look at each student. I can look at how many locks that they completed, how much time it took them, and then the day that they did this. So it's really going to be nice if you're wanting students to do these on your own, they're able to look at that. Yes. When you have, when you say it's a team effort, like a, mm -hmm. a group, so is every student looking at their screen or is only one student have their screen up and one student's entering it? So it depends on how you want to collect the data. So if you're wanting to see data for each student, you're going to want them have to each have their own open. The problem with that is then they may not even be talking and collaborating. That's so, what I was, yeah. yeah. So it's really, it depends on what you're using it for. If it's a study, here you go. Now they can you, you can have each of them have their own. But to start off, you're really going to want those collab that 
those collaborative conversations. So you're only going to want one open. And don't worry about the data when you see it. Just know that these students didn't, you know, didn't have that assignment there. Okay. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. All right. So let me go in. You just see my notes over here. All right. So students. When the students log in, I did put the login code in Google Classroom. So all you would do is have the breakout as a material for your students. You don't have to make it an assignment. They'll click on that student.breakout.edu. They log in with Google Classroom. Once they log in, because it's all connected, this is what their dashboard will look like. Very similar to yours. It'll show my classes at the top. Okay, so if they have only one class, they're going to click on this ILEPL, -E -E click on there, and now it will show them the assignments that they have or the locks that you want them to work on. And here's that lock of the day. So this is available every single day for the students to have access to. Uh, so if that's something you guys want to just have them work on in the morning or as like an exit ticket at the end of the day, just give them the time they're going to probably want to go back and look at this. You will be surprised at how many students go through uh, the lock of the day just on their own. A new feature, which we're not going to really get into, is the game design studio. The, we're going to do a later PD with that, but the students can actually uh, learn how to do locks and they can create their own games if they're you're wanting them to do that. Okay. All right, so we don't have 10 minutes. We probably have more about five to seven minutes for you guys to now explore Breakout EDU and everything that it has to offer. Um, so I really want you guys to see if you can find a game or a, uh, yeah, a breakout that you can use with your students uh, tomorrow if you really wanted to, or next week starting, um, make sure it's grade level, it could be a team building one that you do, but please make sure you try it before you give it to them. Okay. I will set the timer. I will be here to answer questions. You can unmute, type it in the chat, any of those. All right. All right. Time is yours. There was one piece I forgot to show you guys in breakout. Remember I told you to bookmark it and you'll go back to it later? Well, you got to find it, right? <laughs> so when you go to my games on the left-hand side, you can see games that games that were already created, but you could also see your bookmark games. Okay, so here are games that you have assigned. Okay, so you either have made a copy of them and you've edited them. Those are going to be your created games. Draft is if you haven't assigned them yet. So you can go in here and edit, add the details. And then bookmark games are the ones that you said, oh, I want to come back to those some, at some point. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. I would do a team building one as a whole class. That would be great. Yeah. Perfect. Anything to get them thinking. This is new. Some of them may not think the way <laughs> that they need to when they're getting trying to break out of these rooms. So, or rooms or break out of these games. And so any of those team building ones is going to be nice, except for especially for either your English learners who may not be able to speak it, but they can look at the pictures and try to figure that out to help and then help and participate. So that's going to be kind of your nice one. And then those lower students. So those team building ones are going to be nice for that. All right. We have about 10 minutes and unfortunately it takes probably that much time to do the feedback, the, the, all the attendance confirmation and the time cards now. So if no one has any other questions, does anyone else have a question? No? Okay. Um, we are going to go I'm in. I'm sorry, I do. Yes, 
Go for it. What, what do they do if they can't figure one out? Is there any like clues or something? So there are hints that you can give them. All right. I want to share this with you real fast. I found your hints in your digital game. <laughs> so when you're in your class, you're going to go to whatever the assignment was. So we'll click on assign games. I'm going to scroll over to the three little dots. Those three little dots from Roy's have fun things for you down there. So then we can look at details, download it or remove it if you don't want it. So I'm going to hit details and here's where it's going to give them a clue. Okay. So they can open this in a, or you can open it in a new window to show them that clue to see if it helps them figure out the puzzle. Okay. So again, there's only one. If they use that hint, they may need another one. So you may have to give them that first letter or uh, in this one, it's a, a number or letter lock. So you may have to do that, but you can open it in a new window and it pulls it out. I don't know what this puzzle is about, so I can't tell you what the hint is on this page, but those are the hints for them. Okay. All right. So going back. Oh, I thank you, by the way. You're welcome.